In this video we're going to look at limits of accuracy and find the lower bound and upper bound for values that have been rounded. So a number that has, has been rounded to 30 to the nearest 10. So let's consider some values that it could be. So it could be something like 29, it could be 31, it could be 28, it could be 32.7 and so on. So there's lots of different values that would round 30 to the nearest 10. Let's consider the highest possible and the lowest possible values it could be. So the lowest possible value could be, it's quite simple, it's going to be 25. 25 would be the lowest value that would round up to 30 to the nearest 10. However, we need to now consider the highest value that would round to 30. So we could have 34 would obviously round to 30 to the nearest 10. 34.9 would round to 30 to the nearest 10. 34.99 would round to 30 to the nearest 10. Even 34.9 recurring would round to 30 to the nearest 10. So, let's write this as an inequality. So if we let the number that we start with be called x, that means that the value that we choose, uh, the number that we start off with, is going to be bigger than or equal to 25, but it would have to be less than, well, it's going to have to be less than 35, because obviously it can't be 35, 35 would round up to be 40, but anything less than 35 would round down to 30. So therefore, the limits of accuracy would be x is going to be bigger than or equal to 25 but less than 35. The 25, this is called the lower bound, the lower bound, because it's the lower lowest boundary for values that would round to 30 to the nearest 10, and 35 would be the upper bound. Obviously it can't be 35, but at 35 would anything below 35 would round down, so it's the boundary, it's the upper boundary. A race takes 120 seconds to complete, rounded to the nearest 10 seconds. So if we call the time taken t, we know that the time is going to be bigger than or equal to, well, let's have a consider this. So it's been rounded to the nearest 10, and it's, the answer is 120. That means it could be 115, or anything above it. So that means the lower bound is going to be 115. The upper bound, obviously it can't be the 125, but anything below 125 will round down to 120. So the lower bound is going to be 115, and the upper bound will be 125. A piece of string measures 14 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. Find the lower and upper bound. So let's call the length of the string L. So we know that the length is going to be, it's been rounded to the nearest centimetre. Well that means that 13.9 would round up, 13.7, 13.6, 13.5 would be the lower bound. So 13.5 would be the lowest possible value that would round up to 14. Let's then consider the upper bound. So the upper bound, well, it could be 14.1, 14.2, 14.3, 14.4, 14.4, 9 recurring. So 14.5 will be the upper boundary. So that means the lower bound is 13.5, and the upper bound will be 14.5. Uh, the mass of a piece of metal, M, is 5.3 kilograms accurate to one decimal place. So let's consider what the limits of accuracy would be. So m is going to be bigger than or equal to, well, 5.29 would round up, 5.28, 5.27, 5.26, 5.25, whereas 5.24 would round down. Okay, so 5.25 would be, 5.25 would be the lower bound. Let's consider then what would be the upper bound. So 5.31 would round down, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34. So it's going to be 5, less than 5.35. Obviously it can't be 5.35, but that's the boundary. So the lower bound would be 5.25, and the upper bound would be 5.35. The speed of an object is 200 miles per hour to one significant figure. That means it's been rounded to have the 2 at the front and the other digits have been turned into 0. So that means that the lowest possible value that would round up to 200 would be 150. And then the speed, and then the upper bound, well, it would be 250. Because 250 would round up, but it's the boundary. Okay, 249.9 recurring would round down. So the lower bound is 150, the upper bound is 250.